Well, grace and peace, chosen family. Aren't we glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, you can do better than that. Aren't we glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? We are so grateful for all of you who are here tonight, and especially to our Chosen Vessel Everywhere family. We just welcome you tonight for Friday night as we worship in this week of Passion, our Passion Week Revival. We have had a wonderful time, and we're looking to go higher tonight, especially in preparation for Resurrection Sunday. I'll be glad to be here tonight. Amen and amen. This is Friday night. This is the night that we celebrate the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that they call it Good Friday. Interesting. They call it Good Friday. Who was it good for? It wasn't good for Jesus. Let me just kind of describe to you some of the things that are kind of ironic about why we call this Good Friday, a day that may not have been so great for our Lord. Jesus, as we reach the morning of Friday, had been up all night long on Thursday, having been betrayed by one of his chosen 12. That had to be a difficult feeling. He had been up all night long in prayer, when he prayed to the Father, Father, deliver me. But the Father said, no. He had been up all night long recognizing that his hand-picked successor, the one that he chose to be the rock, would, want, would when, when called to represent him, say, peace out. I don't know him. He was up all night long when he was delivered into the hands of Pilate. And when put into the hands of Pilate, he recognized that he was in complete exhaustion because in that night of prayer, he had prayed so hard that his sweat poured from his brow like drops of blood, which is an explanation of extreme anxiety and emotion. He came to the recognition that when they had a chance to choose, who do you want? Do you want Jesus, the king of the Jews? Or do you want Barabbas, a stone cold killer and thief? They said, give us the stone cold thief. Give us the killer. That wasn't a good Friday. When they asked him, They took him and placed a crown of thorns on his head as the king of the Jews. A crown of thorns that stuck down deep into his brow. And then they would take sticks and hit the crown on his head. Then he was taken and he was whipped with a cat of nine tails, stripped completely and hit with a cat of nine tails that was full of 39 individual lashes with pieces of metal in the end and pieces of bone in the end that literally pulled out chunks of his flesh as they beat him over 39 times. That was not a good day. But in the midst of that, he was made to carry his own cross. Now, unlike what the movies show, he didn't just carry the entire cross. He carried the part of the cross called the pedibellum, which was the, which was the cross piece. He carried it, however, in the midst of exhaustion, in the midst of beating, in the midst of mocking, and the midst of scourging. And then when they got him up to the top of Golgotha, they laid him down. And they laid him on the cross beam. And they nailed nails in the base of his palms, going into the wood. And as they stretched him, putting these nine inch nails through the midst of the base of the palm, coming down at an angle out of his, out of his wrists, they then picked up the parabellum and lifted him to the cross piece, to the upper piece that was already in the ground, extending him, his entire body hanging just by the nails in his hands and feet. 
until they dropped it in place and the large jerk that happened as they dropped the body in place, suspended just by his arms and those nails causing a nerve convulsion in his hands, causing excruciating pain. And then they crossed his feet, one in front of the other, and placed a nail into the upright over his feet. That was not a good day. And he hung there, having to experience the excruciating pain. And the worst part about being crucified wasn't just the pain of the nails in the hands and the nails in the feet. Because of the extension of his arms, he was not able to breathe because his lungs would literally collapse when his body was hung down. And in order to catch a breath, he had to force himself back upright by pressing down on the nails that were pushed in his feet just to catch a breath. That was not a good day for Jesus. But there was something that was good. It was good that he said to the, to the soldiers, Father, forgive them because they know not what they do. It was good that even while he was on the cross, he thought about his mother because he looked down at his mother and his disciple John who stayed with him and he said, Mother, behold your son. He cared for her well-being and he cared about the grief of his beloved disciple John when he said, John, behold your mother. But there was something else that was good about Friday because there was a thief that was on the cross on the other side. And the thief who had been mocking him, who had been ridiculing him, looked over to him and said, Lord, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And he looked over in the midst of his own anguish, in the midst of his own pain, and said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. And then finally, out of a charge of authority, recognizing that man didn't take his life, he laid it down. He said, finally, it is finished. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. So tonight, as we worship a Savior who gave his life so that you and I could live, let's worship him and let's go before him in prayer. Tonight, coming to lead us in prayer is Evangelist Quinetta Dunn following her. Elder uh, Minister Dwayne McDonald with our scripture. Grace and peace, praise the Lord, everybody. I know that you feel the way that I do because I feel so grateful that Christ sacrificed for us on that day of Calvary. I know I'm even more excited because I know that his blood still works and his blood will never use, lose its power. Let's go before our Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for choosing us, Father God. And we thank you that you didn't just choose us, but you loved us, Father God. And you loved us enough that your love turned into action, that you gave your only begotten son, Father God. Father, so tonight we celebrate Jesus and we thank him, Lord, and we honor him and we praise him for the sacrifice that we could not pay for ourselves, Father God. Father, help us to recognize that the crucifixion on this good Friday or this holy Friday, Father God, was a symbolization of our death of our own and fleshly and sinful man father God so that we could be resurrected in our new life in you father God father we thank you and we praise you for a savior that is about his father's business father God we know that we live amongst a generation today father that claims to stand on business father God but help us to be a chosen people the people that choose to stand on the Holy Spirit where we seek all guidance and power from you father God father we ask that every word that has been spoken during this passion week father God or this holy week that you bind it to our hearts father God father God Bishop Seth taught us that it is important for us to be encouraged to make sure that we connect to the right relationships father God have the right connections father God so that those who are amongst us are not celebrated in our failure father God but they see and recognize the value that we have in us father God 
Father, come alive in us, Father God, and teach us and walk with us and tell us that it is more than just walking with you, but we need to have, be able to give over total and complete control to you, as Pastor Moore taught us, Father God. Father, as we continue on this journey of salvation, Father, we ask that you help us to move in silence, Father God. Sometimes we have a speaky spirit and we need to utilize some hush mouth grace, Father God, so that the enemy does not know what our next move is, Father God. Help us to recognize that these power struggles that we engage in at times is not a battle for us because every battle that we have, as long as you are on our side, Father, it is a battle that is won. Father God, we don't need to engage in these power struggles because as long as we know who we are in you, Father God, that's all that we need. Father God, now as we go through this service tonight, I ask that you please bless Pastor Morgan and give him a word from on high, a fresh word, Father God, a word that will set your people free and empower and revive and change lives and set free the individuals that feel bound to sin, Father God. Help them to seek and wonder Come running to the altar asking, what must I do to be saved? Father God, let your spirit permeate this place. Have your way like no other day, Lord. Sit, come and rest, rule, and abide in each and every individual, Lord. Father, we thank you for the blood. We praise you for the blood. Father, your blood covers all things, and we praise you today, Father God. We honor you, God, because you are worthy of all the glory and the honor and the praise, Father God. We thank you for Calvary. And we thank you that the blood still works. We honor you today. Have your way in this service, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Grace and peace, saints. I will be reading from 1 Peter, 2nd chapter, verses 24 and 25 from the King James Version. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to, the, to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are, you, you were healed for ye were as sheep going astray but are now returned into, unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls may the Lord have a blessing for the hearers and doers of the word of God Up your hands, everybody, right here. Come on, right here. Look up and down your row and ask your neighbor, say, what did you come to do tonight? I hope you came to give him praise. Clap your hands, everybody. Come on. Wake up, y'all. You come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Say, I don't know what you come to do. But I know what I come to do. Say, yeah. But I know what I come to do. Come on, say, but I. Right there in that comment section. Clap your hands. Come on. Come on. I don't know what I come to do. You say. I don't know what you know what you come to do.
complain. Let's stay there until they clap, y'all. Come on. I come to complain. Hey, I come to complain. I come to come my head. head. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. I come to come my head. head. I come to come my head. head. Clap my head. head. I come to come my head. head. Clap your hands, chosen vessel. See y'all back there. Back the head. Watch me, watch me, watch me. 
Watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. I got a reason, watch me, got a right, watch me, got a reason, watch me, got a right, watch me, heal me, watch me, save me, watch me, wash me, watch me, fill me, watch me, with this holy ghost, watch me, power, watch me, power, watch me, power, watch me, you are to watch me, watch me, you are watch me, watch me, watch me, you are. Chosen. What you wait on? Watch it. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Praise him, everybody. You are the praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noon. Let's praise him. Come on in. Watch me. watch me, come on chosen, look at your neighbor and tell him to watch me, watch me. Oh, 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 oh. praise him, say praise him, everybody, praise him in the morning, come on. praise him in the noon, praise him, let us. They bring no tamarines on Good Friday. I come to clap my head. I come to clap my head. Got a tamarine beat in here. I come to clap my head. I come to clap my head. Anybody here? Anybody in here? Reason to break, got a reason to break, got a reason to break, got a reason to break. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I come to clap my hands. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, I come to clap my hands. Think, think of the goodness, 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 think of the goodness. Anybody got a dance? Anybody got a dance? Move something, y'all. Hey, move something, y'all. Hey, move something, y'all. Move something, y'all. I come to do my thing. I come to do my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I got to do it. I, I, I got to do it. To do it when I think about what he's done, think about what he's done, think about what he's done, save my soul, made me whole. Wave your hands if you got a reason to praise him, raise your hands if you got a reason to thank him. Yeah, praise him, yeah, praise him. Praise him, y'all. Praise him, three parts. Praise him, everybody. Praise you him. You are the praise him. Come on, y'all. Good Friday, 2024. Praise I got a reason. Clap your hands, right? We almost there. Come on, try it. Praise him, everybody. Praise him. 
up and down your row. I've got a reason to praise him. Uh, matter of fact, why don't you go on and testify? Tell him why you got a reason to praise him. Because uh, he woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Put food on my table. Bless me to see another day. Can you do me a favor? Just open your mouth and scream right here. Come on, y'all. Open your mouth and shout. Lift your hands all over the room. Hallelujah. Key of C. With your hands lifted, just say something to him that he needs to hear. I'm going to appreciate him tonight. That's it. Come on, chosen. Open your mouth. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. We give you praise. Yes, God. And, uh, yes, God. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. Oh, and, yes. And, yes, God. We lift our voice. To say thank you. Anybody got a reason to thank him tonight? Come on, just shout out thank you right there. Oh, that was weak. Open your mouth and shout out thank you. Oh, y'all still weak. Open up your mouth and shout out thank you. For your goodness. And your mercy. Towards us. Come on, one more time. I dare you to push some of us been in service here since last week i won't come on this is we're gonna give it all we got tonight open up your mouth and say thank you for your goodness Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Come on. Thank him. Thank him. Push past your tiredness. Come on. Push past everything the enemy is trying to throw in your path. And tell him thank you. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, right there. Right there. Come on, chosen. Matter of fact, why don't you do this? Why don't you take a thank you walk? Come on, move out of your seat and just thank him. Come on, for everything he's done. Come on, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If anybody asks you, why are you praising him like this? Tell him I'm praising him like this. 
because it could be me outdoors with no food or home come on I've got a reason come on I've got a right come on chosen come on chosen open up your mouth and shout right there thank you oh 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 if you need another reason come on thank him because he kept you thank him because he kept you come on thank him because he kept you thank him thank him for your goodness and your mercy towards us for your goodness and your mercy toward us we offer praise. That's it. Come on, chosen all over the building. Lift your voice and say it with us. Come on. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, we give you praise. Yes, sir. Ah. Oh. Come on, for just give him a wave off and chosen if he's been, if you got a reason to thank him for you and your mercies and your mercy for your for your and your mercy, mercy towards us. We offer, we, we offer praise. praise. You are, you are, you are worthy of glory, of glory and honor. honor. Oh, you are. Towards us. Come on, chosen for your goodness and your mercy and your mercy. For us. For your and your mercy toward us. Yes, sir. We all for we all. Come on, chosen. Just one more time. Just one more time. Come on and tell them you are worthy. You are worthy. Is he worthy tonight of glory? Of glory. And honor. Oh, 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 oh. Worthy. Oh, God. Yes, sir. For your goodness, mercy, kindness, kindness. We thank you for being kind. We thank you for being kind. Kind, for you and your mercy. Your mercy for us, for us. We, we are. 
you ought to open up your mouth and offer praise then some of y'all still quiet I need your hands clapping but I also need your mouths open don't just clap your hands but open up your mouths and celebrate the king of kings he's better than that celebrate the lord of lords celebrate the great I am for his goodness come on y'all y'all quiet I can't hear you saints come on give him glory for his goodness come on give him honor for his kindness come on give him praise for his loving mercy towards you somebody open up your mouths and celebrate I said open up your mouths and celebrate I said open up your mouths and celebrate him I'm looking at you your mouths ain't open somebody ought to say something speak well of the God of your salvation yeah yeah oh. somebody bless the name of the Lord I said somebody bless the name of the Lord y'all still quiet I can't get no help here somebody bless the name of the Lord Ooh. hallelujah may be seen in the presence of the Lord today this is the day that he has made we've gotten up from the premise and purpose of rejoicing and being glad and I was absolutely ecstatically excited when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord for it's absolutely in his presence where there is fullness of joy and his right hand his hand of authority there are pleasures of more is there anybody other than me that's excited about your future tonight y'all don't act like y'all excited look at somebody on your right or your left and tell them say neighbor days are getting better y'all ain't act like y'all believe it I, I said look at somebody and tell them say my days are getting better yeah 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 tell somebody else my burdens are getting lighter <laughs> tell somebody else my trials are becoming fewer and just tell one more person say great things I see them in my future Y'all ain't talking to nobody. I said, tell your neighbor, say great things. I see them in my future. Y'all still quiet. I need some help in here. I said, tell your neighbor, say great things. Oh, great things. I see them in my future. I'm just trying to make sure I'm in the right church. I'm trying to make sure the vessel done showed up feel like there's a whole lot of visitors in the building but I wonder is there some vessel lights up in here that can declare when I think I said when I think of his goodness yeah Lord I said yeah Lord I said yeah Lord yes sir yes sir yes sir Look at somebody real fast. I'm trying to move, but I need y'all to touch two or three people. And while you're touching them, just tell them, say, all I need is a moment to think. I don't need all week. I don't need all month. I don't need all year. I just need one moment. And can I tell you what I just thought about? He brought me out. Is there anybody in here? that could get excited because he brought me out y'all take your seats he brought me out yeah 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 I, I just want to make sure I'm in the right church because some of y'all act a little funny up in here I just I, I just need to make sure that we in, we in the vessel because, see, the vessel understand that you only got one job. I can't get no help. I wish you would look at somebody and tell them, say, I only got one job. Some of y'all still quiet. Tell them, say, I only got one job. When I enter into his gates, I'm supposed to have thanksgiving. And when I come into his courts, I'm supposed to give him praise. Tell your neighbor, I only got one job.
is feeling like the vessel now. Only got one job. Only got one job. What's my, I'm supposed to praise him. Bless the Lord. And all, yeah, all time. Take y'all seats, please. I just, I just, I needed to check the temperature in this place. It's Good Friday. That's what I'm talking about. I got a praise because he died. I'm just going to let a praise him, but y'all shouldn't let a praise him by itself. Saints don't let other saints praise by themselves. They help them. They help them a little bit. You better help them. You better help them. That's all I'm talking about. You don't let folk praise by themselves. What's wrong with y'all? Welcome to the vessel for all of y'all that are watching via streaming from all over this entire world. It is Good Friday. And, and, and it's a good day to give God praise. So we're grateful to God. I got to get this preacher up real fast, real soon. I'm not rushing, but I'm just so excited to have this man of God to be with us today. He reminded me some years back and. Uh, I'm going to talk about that when I introduce him, but I'm just going to ask y'all real quick. Do y'all know what time it is? I said, what time is it? It's seed time in the house. As always, there's a multiplicity of ways we can plant seeds in the kingdom of God here. Specifically, at the Chosen Vessel Family of Churches, there are five ways in which we give. Uh, if you need an envelope in your hand, lift your hand up high. The brother servants are in the aisles even as we speak. They're going to give you an envelope so you can plant seed into the kingdom of God. But for those, 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 man of God, man of God, we missed one right here. Bro, y'all tap it, touch it. <clears throat> for those of y'all who are giving electronically, those who are giving electronically, you can go to the Givelify app. When you get to the Givelify app, look for the words, the Chosen Vessel Cathedral. Also, you can uh, close the Vessel Church, my bad, Chosen Vessel Church not cathedral the chosen vessel church you can also give me a cash app a cash app that's cash sign tcbc ministries cash sign tcbc ministries you can give me a paypal it's paypal.me paypal.me forward slash tcbc 4650 you can text the word give text the word give to 833948 1987 you can make a check payable to tcbc 
on. You can use your credit card. You can put it on the envelope, and we will make sure that it is taken care of safely and disposed when necessary and when needed. For those of you all that are watching from all over this country, as always, on every Tuesday, but we're not Tuesday, we are Friday, I challenge at least 400 of you all to plant a seed of $20. I used to think $20 is a whole lot of money, but the reality is, is that $20 isn't a whole lot of money. So I want to challenge you all to plant that $20 seed. Plant it, plant it, plant it. If all of those were in the sanctuary, I'm going to ask that you would plant that $20 seed as well. I'm challenging each and every individual to plant a $20 seed. Um, y'all know we do. We stand to our feet. What we do, we wave our seed, fam. There's a reason why we wave our seed because we're waving away debt. We're waving an increase. We wave our seed because we're getting the attention of the master. We're telling God that we don't give grudgingly, nor of necessity, but we're cheerful givers. We honor him with the fruit of our labor because he's honored us with the activity of our limbs. We honor him with the fruit of our labor because he's honored us with the ability to inhale and exhale. This is not a debt we owe, but it is a seed we sow. We seed in the good ground, believing that God is going to give us back some 30, some 60, and some 100, and even some 1,000-fold return for the seed that we're about to plant into the kingdom of God. Most importantly, we give our seed an assignment. Its assignment is to go into our futures to create avenues and streams of wealth and increase where we would not live off of that which we make, but we're going to live off of the overflow of that which we sow. Somebody holler at me, say, I'm expecting a harvest. Say, it's going to rain in my life. And from this seed, I declare and decree that I shall never, I will never be broke, not another day in my life. Somebody holler at me, say, hallelujah. These two sections, put your offering in each section so our deacons can come up, those two sections as well, so our deacons can come up and receive your seed. I'm, I am so very grateful to God and honored of God to have this man of God to be with us. I mean, I'm just, I'm just honored. I've, I've had the opportunity of knowing him for many, 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 many years. And uh, some time ago, he reminded me where he met me. It was a conference that I used to preach at in Flint, Michigan uh, for a woman by the name of Odelia Dunlap. And I, I was a young preacher, and they would bring me up there. And I don't, you weren't even preaching there, were you? He wasn't preaching there, but he is an exceptional musician, an exceptional musician. And uh, I would come up there, and we actually met then. And then before he made his transition to Warner Robins, Georgia, he invited me to his church to preach in Detroit, Michigan. He told me about the transition. And, uh, and I tell y'all, what he is doing in Warner Roberts, Georgia, is just beyond amazing. Um, I consider him, without question, one of, one of the most gifted preachers I've ever, I've ever met. And I'm just just saying that, y'all. I mean, this man of God has a word in his mouth. I've, I've made, I've, I've, I haven't made, somebody missed her offering. If y'all can grab that for us, I greatly appreciate it. I've invited many individuals here. and Usually I knock the ball out the park. There's a couple I missed on. I'm honest about it. But I promise you tonight, this ain't a miss. If you sit in anticipation and you put the demand on the anointing that's on this man's life, I, I, I want to pull out of him everything that's within him today. Because, because we came tonight with an expectancy. Look, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor. Tell him, say, what God has for me is in his mouth. Y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. I need you to speak into the atmosphere. I need y'all to declare what God has for me is in his mouth tonight. I believe very strongly that God is going to deposit something great in this house through this gift. Through this gift. Through this gift. So hailing all the way from Warner Roberts, Georgia. I want y'all, I'm not even going to do no music. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Put me a B flat. No, A flat. E flat? 
just so y'all have a song. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchase of God, y'all. Born of his spirit, I've been washed in his blood. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. I'm watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness. Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior. Oh, the day long. This is my story. This is. My song, y'all. Oh, I'm praising my Savior all the day long. I want you all to put your hands together for my friend and my brother, all the way from Warner Roberts, Georgia, Pastor Tolan Morgan. Can you clap those same hands and give God praise, will you? No, I said give God praise. 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 Hallelujah. To God be the glory for the many things that he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. We honor our Heavenly Father, his Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who hung for six hours one Friday and died until death died. Three days later, he came out of the grave, not as a weakling, but with all power in his hands. Fifty days later, he sent the Holy Ghost to reside and to preside on the inside of us. And what a joy it is for us to know that we're not just his creation, but we're his children. And after all we've been through, we still have our right minds. But he will keep you in perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on him. I give honor and deference to my big brother, my friend, the one and the only Bishop Marvin Sapp. Come on, church, give God praise for him. That's my God, man. That's my God. <clears throat> we Michigan boys have been walking together for a while now. And uh, I'm just honored to see how God has continued to lift up this international voice. Amen. Amen. And continue to take him from one level of grace to the another. And thank you, man, for the invitation. Y'all know he's Marvin Sam, so he had plenty of other options. And so I'm honored to be here tonight. Um, we're still friends, even though he made me last. Uh, just, just put more pressure on me. Uh, I'm sure that's, I'm sure y'all tired and ready to get to Sunday. So just uh, bear with my little Easter speech tonight. 
and uh, we'll give God praise together. We honor all who are a part of this uh, worship in the virtual sanctuary, and uh, we thank God for you. Can we give God praise for those in the virtual sanctuary? While you're standing, I want to summon your senses and invite your intellect to the gospel that has been recorded by Matthew. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter number 27. And it is there that the Holy Spirit has highlighted for us this context of Scripture, beginning with verse number 11. Matthew chapter 27, verse number 11. Your Bible should read, and Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, You say so. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Do you not hear many things they witness against you? And he answered him to never a word, and so much that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was willing to release unto him a prisoner, whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you release unto you? Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, have nothing to do with that just man. For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Which of the two will I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus? which is called Christ. They all said unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why? What evil has he done? Well, they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather atonement was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. You all see to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood is on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. I want to tag this text, You Can't Handle the Truth. You may be seated in the Lord's church. The U.S. Constitution states that the President of the United States reserves the right to select and or nominate whoever he wants to serve in the positions of government office, cabinet positions, and federal judges. So in February of 2022, President Joe Biden nominated Katanji Brown Jackson, who would be the 116th associate judge of the U.S. Supreme Court. His nomination of her was historic because she would become the first African American woman to sit in a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. Constitution also required that 
once the president made a selection of who he wants to sit in these seats, that these persons would also have to undergo what was known and what is known as a confirmation hearing. And in that confirmation hearing, a group of bipartisan senators would question the president's nomination to approve or deny the president's nomination. April 7th, 2022, Tanji Brown Jackson's confirmation hearing happened and during her hearing, there was a scenario presented to her of a case that surrounded a transgender athlete. Senator Marshall, Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee questioned Judge Brown Jackson with this particular question. Can you provide for us the definition of woman. And Judge Brown Jackson responded by saying, no, I can't. They went on to another subject and later on in the hearing, Senator Ted Cruz of this state <laughs> revisited the issue with Judge Brown Jackson. He said to her, I think you're the first person in the history of this court that has been unable to answer the question. As though defining gender is some centuries old necessity to serve on the Supreme Court as some ancient application form that if you define gender, you'll pass this test. This second time when it came around, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson had a different answer. The second time she didn't say, no, I can't answer it. Listen at her answer this second time. She said, since you brought it back up, let me give you this answer. I am a woman. You were looking for an answer, and I am the embodiment of the answer you was looking for. And the question stopped, church, because the it became a who. I thought y'all knew the Bible in this church, so let me tell you, church, on this night, Thursday night, Monday, Thursday, years ago, they put it in court. And they couldn't handle it because it was a who. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Typically, church, courts are designed to come to some judicial decision based off the truth. But in Jesus' case, they were not trying to ascertain the truth. They were trying to attack the truth. They were not trying to discover the truth. They were trying to denounce the truth. And the reason why they couldn't, they attacked the truth and denounced the truth is because they couldn't handle. I can't get no help here. Might I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that your life might be under attack because people can't handle you being who God designed you to be. You are at an interesting place in life when people are offended by who God made you to be. Such is the discipline discovered in the discourse of Matthew chapter number 
27, the truth is on trial. And he has an interesting response to this kangaroo court. Church, by the time we get to Matthew chapter 27, Jesus is in the fourth of six trials. He's in the fourth of six trials. And this fourth trial is the official trial, but it is the illegal trial. It is illegal, church, when the judge is the leader of the prosecution. It's an unjust trial because Pilate Church is the ruler of the Jews who has launched the prosecution against Jesus and thus that cancels it from being a fair trial. It's an illegal trial because the only people who talked in the trial are the prosecution. There are no witnesses for the defense. There are no defense lawyers. There is no time of setting up an argument. As a matter of fact, they wasn't even supposed to do the trial the day before the Passover. So the timing is illegal. The structure is illegal. The setup is illegal, which shows how desperate some people are when they got to stare the truth in the face. I can't get no help here. And watch this church. Jesus Christ gives us a clinic on how to handle life when the truth about you is under attack by everything around you. Come here church. I'm in verses 11 through 14. Here's what it says pastor. It says they got him in trial. This is an emergency nocturnal trial. It happened quickly. They couldn't even wait until the Passover was over. It's an emergency nocturnal trial. And the Bible says they got Jesus there. They have transferred him from Annas to Caiaphas, from the Sanhedrin court, now to Pilate. This is the fourth of six trials. This is the official trial. And the Bible says that they tried to get him on the charge of being the son of God. Well, the problem with that is they, in their eyes, he was found to be guilty of blasphemy. But blasphemy is not worthy of capital punishment. They can't kill you over blasphemy. So Luke chapter 23 verse 2 says, they created some additional charges of tax evasion and treason. And now the new critical question rises in verses 11 and 12. You got a Bible, here's what it says. Here's the critical question of the court. Are you the king of the Jews? And the Bible says Jesus said nothing. The elders and the priests concocted these trumped up charges and he never said a mumbling word. Pilate looks at him and says, do you not hear these people? who are trying to come against you and you're not going to say nothing. The text says, and he said never a word unto them to the point that Pilate marveled at his silence. Well, come here, church. If Jesus would have answered yes, <clears throat> he would have complied to their charge of treason. If Jesus would have answered no, he would have denied the office that God gave him. So whatever answer he gives would be the wrong answer. So he stands in silence and says, you said so. Let me try it one more time. Jesus teaches us a lesson, church, 
that sometimes silence doesn't mean you're scared. Silence means you're settled. That the problem with you is that you want me to respond because you forgot church that the person who questioned him about is he the king of the Jews was the king of the Jews still missed it it was Pilate who now has authority over the Jews who questioned him are you the king of the Jews well catch it church this is an interesting question because it not only has present consequences but it has historical context catch me church they asked him are you the king of the Jews uh, Matthew chapter 2 verse 2 the wise men showed up with gifts in their hands and when they showed up, they said, where is he? Born king of the Jews. John chapter 1 verse 49. Nathan shows, Nathaniel shows up and says in verse 49, Sir, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Matthew chapter 21, when he entered into Jerusalem, they strung out palms and he rode in on an ass to confirm the prophecy that was laid out in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9. Catch it church, you missed the notes. The Gentiles says he's the king. The Jews says he's the king. And 30 years later, you questioning me about something you already knew. You missed all that. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you got to understand that you don't have to fight back. You don't have to cuss back. You don't have to give nobody a piece of your mind. The truth of the matter is, if you don't respond, it's proof that you are not struggling with you. They are struggling with you. Do I got anybody in here that'll thank God? I am unbothered by the fact that who I am bothers you touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor I'm unbothered you know who I am but you can't stand who I am and because you can't stand who I am let me prove to you I'm not going to respond because I am unbothered by the fact that you are bothered by who I am do I got anybody that will thank God when you're sure in God you ain't got to cuss nobody out when you're sure in God you ain't got to fight back your greatest super the power is to be unbothered touch two people and tell them I'm unbothered I'm unbothered I will walk around you knowing you can't stand me because I am unbothered. I will come right in the lunchroom and sit next to you because I know you can't stand me, but I am unbothered. I already know you went off on me on social media. I'm coming to church and find you and sit right next to you because I am unbothered by the fact that who I am bothers you. Where are the unbothered people at? text is tailored to teach us church that when you walk in the truth watch me you can contain your composure Lord have mercy today I said when you walk in the truth you can contain your composure you don't always have to fight back sometimes your silence is a sign that you're settled and not scared. He never responded to him because he is the truth. I am the embodiment of what you trying to struggle with. <laughs> Lord have mercy today. And I could care less how you feel about it. I'm going to be me even if you struggling with who I am. That's God's word for somebody in here. Because you were on your way to say something you didn't have no business saying. And God just sent you a word to say, stand still. 
and see the salvation of the Lord. You don't always have to fight back when you already know you. the truth is on your side. When you walk in the truth, church, you can control your composure. Watch me, church. When you walk in the truth, uh, the people who oppose you will confirm the very thing they're trying to cancel. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can help somebody. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, they have launched an all-out attack on Jesus. Why are they launching an attack on Jesus? Y'all ready? The truth of the matter is, by the time we get to Matthew chapter 27, Jesus has already worked approximately 40 miracles. He has already amassed thousands of people. And he has already established the kingdom of God in the earth. I'm going to try one more time. By the time we get to Matthew chapter 27, he has already amassed about 40 miracles. He's got crowds everywhere he goes. And he's already inaugurated the kingdom. Come here. Did you notice who fought against him? It wasn't the people. It was other preachers. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm going to try it one more time. He has already worked 40 miracles. He has already amassed the crowd. He has already established the kingdom. And the text says, that the folk who fought against him were priests. Apparently y'all don't read the Bible over here. Jesus' enemy was some other preachers. Because more often than not, the people who fight against you share your position. Lord, I can't get no help here. So, so, so you got to watch people who say they're your colleague. You, you got to watch folk who say they walk with you because those are the ones who can't stand the fact that you are rising in what God called you to do. And where God called you to do, it is taken away from who they are. I didn't make that up. It's right there in the text. The opposition to the preacher was some more preachers. I can't get no help in here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently in the body, we've watched preachers attack preachers. And it's a trick of the enemy. Because if there's ever a way to discredit the body of Christ, it's to get preachers. Bishop, don't nobody want to talk to me now. Might I suggest to you, church, that the attack that is against you could come from somebody who shares your same position. Watch me, y'all. But the very thing they trying to cancel, they continue and they confirm. Because, come here, it doesn't make sense to try to attack me on something that doesn't already exist. Okay, you missed all that. Whatever you coming against, some, if somebody's coming against you, the thing they coming against already exists. So it is an allergic response to the success that you already have. I can't get no help here. Ladies and gentlemen, watch me. Anybody that's attacking you, they are attacking you because the thing they are attacking and trying to stop already exists. Might I suggest to you, might I suggest to you, church, that we need to be conscious and careful. 
of how you walk in your truth under the assumption that everybody around you can handle your truth. There are those church that cannot handle your truth. Okay, y'all missed it. They're at trial and they, Jesus doesn't respond. Uh, they bring up this case now that the chief priests and the rulers have an opportunity now to put more pressure on him because what they're really trying to get Jesus to do is to deny who God made him to be. <laughs> I got to pause there. Tap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm going to be who God made me to be. I know that might be uncomfortable for you, but I'm going to be who God made me to be. I'm not going to let you pressure me into stop being who God made me to be. Come here. Come here. And the Bible says, here comes some more pressure. Y'all ready? Hey, hey, hey. You don't want to say nothing? Fine. Let's put it to vote. I tell you what we'll do. Uh, let's let's see if it'll be you or Barabbas, and let's put it to vote. Uh, church, they decided since he don't want to talk, let's put his life on the line. Lord help me. I can't get no help here. Let, let's put his life on the line and gamble his life into somebody else's hands. They said if Pilate wants to release a prisoner and the prisoner is Barabbas. And when he makes a decision, he got a warning from his wife whom God visited in a dream. And she told him, do not mess with that man of God. I've suffered many things of him in a dream. Wait y'all. And while she's talking to him from a prophetic eye. Lord have mercy today. The chief priests and the rulers are talking to the people from a demonic eye. They say to the people, when he puts this vote to us, select rats, Barabbas, and let us destroy Jesus. Y'all missed all that. While there is one person God is talking to for you, there's another person that God is talking to against you. And you are standing at the vortex of influences. You missed all that. Ladies and gentlemen, when the truth about you is on, is on trial, watch this. They think they're trying you when actually the people who are trying you are getting exposed. Because while you trying to pull the truth out, on me if you mess around and touch the anointed the truth gonna come out on you and it's gonna prove that you're illegal you're demonic and you don't have a just right to do what you do tap your neighbor and tell them neighbor watch what you say about me cause the same mess you say about me it just may expose you Jesus is the subject of influences. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But you got to be careful who you let speak into your spirit. I can't get no help here. Okay. Uh, th there was a story about a woman who went to the hospital. And when she went to the hospital, she got diagnosed with lung cancer common diagnosis but her case was uncommon common condition uncommon case a woman was diagnosed with lung cancer what made her case uncommon bishop is that she had never smoked a cigarette in her life she got lung cancer common case uncommon condition 
She's got lung cancer and she's never smoked a cigarette in her entire life. Her case drew the attention of physicians near and far. They were trying to wonder if she had no pre-existing challenging behavior, what brought on this lung cancer? Bishop, through a series of questions, she began to disclose that she had been married for 30 years and her husband was a chain smoker. So she's a secondhand smoke victim who got lung cancer because she was around somebody else's smoke. Still ain't feeling me. She is sick in her body because she let somebody else's smoke get in her spirit. And I don't know who I'm preaching to because some of y'all are sick because you don't let somebody else's smoke get in your spirit. The devil is a lie. Let me help you. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in it does he meditate day and night tap somebody and tell them neighbor you better watch who's influencing you cause you sick off of somebody else's smoke might we be clear church pilot is under divine influence the people are under demonic influence and the truth finally came out y'all ready they picked barabbas knowing that jesus had no crimes no violations no incriminations and the text says something critical for he knew that they did it out of envy. Y'all don't know how to get heaven. <laughs> the truth finally came out that when you try the truth, it'll expose the liar. When you try the truth, it'll expose you who are working against the truth and they've got envy against Jesus. This whole trial, Bishop, is a court of envy. Lord have mercy. Can I tell you why? Lord, hold your boy right here. Uh, this is a whole court of envy for one reason. They are sick of Jesus' success. They sick of him. Everywhere he go, he heals somebody. Everywhere he go, a crowd comes with him. Everywhere he go, he tells a parable. Everywhere he go, he's changing some lives. And they're coming against him because they're sick of his success. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. But you're going to find out who your real friends are when you get blessed. Not when you're struggling, not when you really need them. You're going to find out who your real friends are when God gives you the new job, when God opens doors for you, when God lifts your ministry, when God gives you a fresh anointing. You're going to see who your real friends are. Uh, jealousy is an allergic reaction to success. I said jealousy is an allergic reaction to success. I said jealousy is an allergic reaction to success. Would you ask your neighbor one critical question? Ask them, neighbor, can you stand to be blessed? Because your broke friends ain't going to be your blessed friends. It shifts and exposes people around you when you start to walk in the truth of how God has made your life. This whole court is a court of envy and while they were trying to discredit Jesus, they got exposed. And can I tell y'all the joke? 
Jesus still hasn't spoken. He still ain't said nothing. Can I tell you why, church? Because a lie needs roommates, but the truth can live alone. The truth don't need to fight. The truth don't need to always talk. It'll stand all by itself. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Is it anybody in here that don't worry about it when you got the truth on your side? When you walk in the truth, you can contain your composure. When you walk in the truth, they will confirm the very thing they're trying to cancel. But third, the church, when you walk in the truth, your enemy will actually continue God's causes. Come in, come in, come in. They have this debate. Oh, which one of these guys do you want? The, the, the chief priests and the rulers have already infected the people to tell Pilate, give us Barabbas and kill Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Pilate says, well, what are we going to do with Jesus? Because Barabbas is what the text calls a notable prisoner. His crimes are a matter of public record. Lord, I can't get no help here. There is no secret to his indiscretions. What he has done is public and wrong. He, he is a menace to society. He is an enemy of the state. His is public. Jesus' record is clean, innocent. The people said, give us the guilty guy and kill Jesus. Y'all missed it, church. The whole system was designed to stop Jesus when in fact it continued God's causes on Jesus' life because when it was all said and done, he took the place of the guilty. Which is the whole reason why he came in the first place. Y'all missed it, so I'll try it again. What you don't understand, church, is that at the feast of Passover, it was an annual tradition to set a prisoner free. And it so happens that the day that Barabbas was supposed to get sentenced, Jesus got sent to court on the same day and he got set free because it's an annual set a man free meeting. Y'all missed all that. Every year, they supposed to set somebody free. And Jesus showed up on the day he was supposed to be sentenced because Jesus says, don't kill him. Y'all want him? Go ahead and kill him. Because what you trying to stop is the very reason why God sent me. I came to take the place of the guilty people. I thought I had about 25 of y'all in here. If you ain't too bougie to thank God, God, he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes. If you've ever sinned in your life, you ought not to ever come in church and shut up. If you've ever messed up and displeased God, you ought not to ever come in church and be quiet. Because you are here because the innocent took the place of the guilty. I quit. I quit. Bishop. There was one more dilemma here. Myron, I quit. We can, we can go get something to eat after, we, after I get this point. 
There was one more dilemma, Pastor. Here it is, Bishop. Here's the problem, y'all. Pilate had a problem, y'all, because he's got to choose between Barabbas and Jesus. He doesn't want to choose. He lets the people choose. Watch this. He's got the power to sentence both of them because he had the judicial right as the prefect of Judea representing the Roman government to kill both of them. Y'all missed it. He's got a problem because he's run out of crosses. That day, they only prepared three crosses. Two of them had already been taken. And it's Barabbas and Jesus. And the cross was designed for Barabbas. But, but they said take Barabbas and kill Jesus. And it solved the issue. We don't have four crosses. We only got three. Two of them are already taken. So let's put Jesus on that cross. And what they didn't know is that they continue God's causes. Because that's the whole reason why he came here. That was never your cross. That was always my cross. His blood was shed for the remission of of my sins tap three people and tell them he took my place on the cross they ran out of crosses there was only one left and it was for Jesus Christ can I bid you farewell church and tell you behold the lamb Ooh, ah, yeah. that comes to take away Lord the sins of the world have I got myself a witness in this place grab your neighbor by the hand and tell him neighbor uh uh you gotta get your preacher voice on neighbor I'm glad tonight that there was only one cross left and that cross was for him who was the truth do I go to witness here touch somebody and tell them neighbor you got to know the truth and the truth will set you free y'all miss what they said good night chosen may the Lord God bless you real good but on my way back to Georgia I got to tell y'all what they said in the text get your Bible and here's what the Bible said when Pilate looked at them and I asked them what are we going to do with Jesus he said y'all going to take him they said crucify him he took some water and washed his hands but when it got back to the crowd y'all miss what they said they said his blood is on us and our children y'all slept on that they said his blood is on us and our children y'all still sleep they thought that they were killing Jesus but they was actually right because when he stretched his arms around the blood yes sir came streaming down anybody here got the blood on your house anybody here got the blood on your children what can wash Lord, away my sin. Yeah, Lord, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I 
need y'all to do me a favor and go lay your hand on two people and tell them neighbor the blood is on your life that neighbor didn't get happy tell them neighbor I plead the blood on your children the blood on your house the blood on your health the blood on your family the blood on your ministry and is it anybody here got the blood on your life then tap your neighbor and tell them neighbor the reason why I'm still alive is because the blood is still on me anybody here can give God praise that the blood is still on you he died so that you could live I feel like preaching here he died so that you could live and because the blood is still on your life you can have this testimony down at the cross down at the cross where my savior died down where for cleansing from sin I cried to my heart was the blood applied and I'm singing glory yeah to his name anybody here got a glory in your spirit tap your neighbor and tell him neighbor you can't handle the truth cause when you stand on the truth it'll bring you out of some dark situations and they try to kill the truth they put nails in the hand of the truth they put a crown of thorns y'all excuse me now I feel my good Friday anointing they put a crown of thorns on the truth's head and they couldn't stop the truth they put nails in the foot of the truth but they couldn't stop the truth they put a spear in his side but they still couldn't stop the truth he finally decided that no man takes my life I lay it down for my friend they took the truth off the cross put the truth in another man's tomb and they thought and they thought and they thought and they thought, and they thought, and they thought that the truth would stay dead but the good thing about it you can't handle the truth the truth will rise up on Sunday morning with all power in his hand anybody here got the truth if you know it give him glory because the truth has set you free I said give him glory tap your neighbor and tell him neighbor 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 God is gonna keep you in the truth and if you believe it let's go home together grab him one more time and tell him neighbor I got five reasons why you ought to give him glory reason number one he woke you up this morning reason number two he woke you up this morning morning reason number three he woke you up this morning reason number four he woke you up this morning reason number five he woke you up now let everything I said let everything I said let everything that got up give him glory yeah
Yeah! I know he's alright. Yeah! I know you're ready to go home, but I need you just to lift your hands and give God glory because you can handle the truth. I said, give him praise if you know you can handle the truth. just say this I, I don't even want to say nothing break it down for me please I don't know if y'all got this What he said was, is that the cross that was initially for Barabbas
that he ended up taking Barabbas' place. So he was Barabbas' redemption before he became our redemption. So that was never Barabbas' cross. He became the propitiation for Barabbas. Even before Barabbas, y'all, 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 y'all. So he did it before he did it. I'm trying, I'm trying to get up out of here. Just look at somebody and tell them, say, the reason why I'm praising him now is because I got a brand new revelation. The revelation that I have now is that I'm so very grateful that God did it for me even before he did it. In other words, he showed me in advance what I was going to get in my next Y'all listen, let's stand up. Will y'all please stop? Because I'm about to run up out of here. I'm so messed up right now, I don't even know what to say. Jesus Barabbas. Will y'all please stop? Please, please. Please, please. Now you just can't shout in the back like that by yourself. Y'all, we can't let him just shout by himself. Somebody help him, please. He just back just dancing. Could y'all help him, please? Somebody give him. Listen, how many of y'all receive something from this word tonight? I'm sitting up here just, we have to seed into this anointing. Y'all, we got to seed into this. You can't handle the truth. They couldn't. They mishandled it they thought but in their handling or rather in their mishandling they blessed the whole nation the whole world everything my God my God can can, can I can can I get y'all to do something for me please I, I I need at least I need at least 40 of you all to do this for me quickly We've been seeding, we've been sowing. The man of God didn't take a seed off him, but I, I just, we got to anoint, I, we, we got to seed into his life tonight. And I, I, I take care of preachers when they come here. We got to seed into his life. I need 40 of you to quickly, and, and, and I don't beg or anything, I need 40 of you to quickly meet me at this altar with $100. Quick, come on right now, right now. Come to this altar right now with $100 seed. I need 40 of you to move quickly move quickly I want to take care of this man of God even if you're giving electronically just come to the altar I need you to move quickly 40 of you to move quickly with a $100 seed if you can stand with me come on come over here come over here stand with me stand with me I need 40 of you to move quickly 40 of you to move quickly just stand uh, in, in my direction, y'all. Just come across here. I need 40 of you to move quickly. There are those that are watching via streaming. Man, you can plant this seed, too. We don't want to miss this moment. Oh, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God. Hallelujah. We've been giving all week. We don't want to miss this moment. Hallelujah. 
those of you who are saying we can't give a $100 seed, I don't want you to miss this moment. I want you to give the very best that you can possibly give. And for everybody that's going to see this, so into this moment, I just need you to stand to your feet quickly. Just stand up, everybody. If you got something out of what this man of God said, gee, my God. I'm about to go read this again. You can't give 100, give 50, 25. Everybody should give something. Amen. My God. I can't take this. Can we have him come back, y'all? I got some good friends. I really do. I want to make sure we can bring it back. I want to, I want to give him something to ensure that he wants to come back. If, if, if you're giving uh, cash in hand, just come to the altar and just, just bring it right now. Everybody that's giving electronically, you go back to your seat. Amen. We, we're about to give y'all the benediction. And we're about to go home. Because I got to... I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, come, come, come. Just come, come, come. My God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my God, I tell you. I just cannot understand why he came here tonight and did that. I'm his friend. I'm going to invite him back. He ain't got to act like that. He's coming back. Y'all, let's stand up and prepare to go home. I just cannot understand why he would do this to us tonight. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I give you glory. Now as we prepare to leave this place but not your presence, go with us and take care of us. Put your love around us, protection around us. Keep us all from hurt, harm, and danger until we assemble ourselves together again this coming Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, to worship you in the beauty of holiness. I thank you and I give you glory in advance for what you're doing. God, you just a confirming God. And we just, we just so appreciate you. I mean, you're just blowing my mind daily here at the vessel. Cover us and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You all may be dismissed.